positive for COVID-19. Those were all recorded yesterday. Altogether, there have been more than 120,000 positive cases. The overall positivity rate remains at 8.7%. Now to Democracy 2020 and an important judge's ruling impacting your vote in the November election. If you're voting absentee, you will have more time to get your ballot to your county's election office. A federal judge ruled that an election office must accept your ballot as long as it's postmarked by November 3rd and they receive it within 10 days. Previously, the election office had to receive it by noon on election day. The judge found that the noon deadline disenfranchised voters and violated their first and 14th Amendment rights. The Indiana Secretary of State's office declined to comment on the ruling. It seems people can't stop talking today about the first debate between President Trump and Vice President Biden. It featured sharp and personal insults, and the debate commission today is calling for change. ABC's Elizabeth Shuley reports. She thinks that Despair and disappointment from voters today after the first presidential debate showcased an ugly and personal verbal assault between President Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden. I was hoping to see more from both candidates. I was hoping to learn more about where both candidates stood. Something is wrong here. Something is deeply wrong here. The 98-minute debate featuring constant interruptions from President Trump. Can you let him finish, sir? He doesn't know how to do that. He has, You'd be you know, surprised. He, will you Who shut up, man? Listen. It's hard to get any word in with this clown. Excuse me, this Hey, hey this let me person. just say. And this stunning moment with the president refusing to condemn white supremacists, instead telling the far-right extremist group, the Proud Boys, to stand by. I'm willing to do anything. I want to see well, peace. then do it, sir. Say it. Do it. Say it. Do you want to call him? What do you want to call him? Give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacists and right like me to condemn? White Proud supremacists Boys. and right Proud, Proud Boys. Boys. Stand back and stand by. Today, Trump trying to clarify those comments. I don't know who Proud Boys are, but whoever they are, they have to stand down, let law enforcement do their work. On the campaign trail in Ohio, Biden sharply rebuking the group. My message to the Proud Boys and every other white supremacist group is cease and desist. That's not who we are. This is not who we are as Americans. The former vice president calling last night's debate a wake-up call for American voters. The president of the United States conducting himself the way he did, um, I think it was just a, a national embarrassment. Biden reassuring voters in Ohio, President Trump will step down if he loses the election, but Trump himself not so clear on that point in the debate last night. The president continuing to peddle unfounded claims of widespread fraud from mail-in voting. This is going to be a fraud like you've never seen. This is Evidence not going to end well. Trump today lashing out at the debate moderator Chris Wallace and defending his performance on Twitter ahead of a campaign rally in Duluth, Minnesota. The Commission on Presidential Debates issued a surprising statement this afternoon promising there will be more structure in the remaining debates between Trump and Biden. Both campaigns would have to agree to any changes in the formats. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. So what did our political insiders have to say about what transpired last night? WRTV's Rafael Sanchez checked in with them today. We want to welcome in our insiders, Democrat Laura Beck. Republican Megan Robertson. The debates have been panned as being a complete disaster or a debacle, depending on who you are. Did we get anything positive out of that exchange between President Trump and Mr. Biden? Megan? Honestly, it was pretty bad. Um, I'll just say that up front. Uh, but I do think, you know, there were snippets of it where you could get some ideas about where the candidates stand and, and see some contrast between them um, in between all the bickering and um, immature behavior. Yeah, wow. um, I, I, I think yeah, I, I was laughing when we were off screen that I thought the most positive thing is that it's over. Um, but I do think Megan's right. You were able to see some of the contrast between the two candidates. Um, and if you are an undecided voter and you were tuning in, um, you probably watched for 20 minutes, but you could definitely see a contrast in that 20 minutes between the two candidates. Voting starts in Indiana on Tuesday. Does this debate sway any independent voter in Indiana? In fact, are there any independent undecided voters left in Indiana? Laura? I, oh, I think there, I think there absolutely are. Um, they may be, uh, they may have made their decisions at the top of the ticket, maybe deciding as you go down ballot. Um, but I do think that there are undecided voters and I do think debates matter. Uh, when you watch that debate last night, it does show you how is this person going to comport themselves? Um, are they presidential? Um, are they talking to the American people 
or are they just there to uh, cause a fracas? Um, so I, I think it does give you a window into who these people are. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with that. There's definitely some undecided voters out there. Voting is starting, um, you know, maybe people who are undecided are going to wait a little bit longer and see what happens. And so I think uh, the coming days are going to be really important. Um, I, I do think you, you saw a contrast and, um, and you know, if you were looking for something to sway you, uh, I feel like there was probably enough there one way or the other. Next up are the vice presidential candidates next week. Has this first debate among the presidential candidates lowered the benchmark or has it made that next debate with the vice presidential candidates even more important? Do the vice presidents even matter for that case? Megan? I think they do matter. Um, it, it could be an opportunity to actually hear some more policy debate. Of course, it's going to be a lot of canned, um, you know, responses and things of that nature. But um, we might actually get more of a policy uh, debate out of the vice presidential debate. Um, now, you know, will people tune in and watch it? I think that's a different question. Um, maybe they had enough after what they saw last night. Laura, I, I actually, more. yeah, I agree with I agree with Megan. I do think people are going to watch it. I think it will be focused on policy. Uh, I do think that um, Vice President Pence and Senator Harris uh, really are going to take a responsibility to uh, have a more civil discourse. And I also think it's really important because um, in this day and age, uh, and with all due respect to both presidential candidates um, and their ages, it's really important to listen to what these vice presidential candidates have to say. So I, I, I think that actually, those will probably be more substantive than what we're gonna see on the presidential side. Our political insiders, thank you on this Wednesday and our Democracy 2020 coverage continues on WRTV.com. And as Raphael talked about, the candidates for vice president are next up on the debate schedule. Vice President Mike Pence and Senator Kamala Harris face off next week, Wednesday, October 7th. Two more presidential debates are scheduled for October 15th and October 22nd. We have your guide to the November general election up right now on our website at WRTV.com. That includes all the dates that you need to know in order to make sure your vote counts. The voter registration deadline is Monday. You can find a link to register and so much more at WRTV.com slash vote in 2020. Big news today from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. The Brickyard 400 has been part of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway's annual calendar for 27 years. NASCAR will be back in 2021, but taking a new twist on running at the Brickyard. IMS announcing today a doubleheader Brickyard weekend next summer. NASCAR and IndyCar will both run on the Speedway's road course on August 14th and 15th. The two series raced together for the first time here on the weekend of July 4th. The Xfinity Series went on the road course, and that race was a big hit. So NASCAR has decided to move the Cup cars there next summer. Drivers from both series are buzzing with some excitement about the new combo. It doesn't matter if you're in a Cup car, an Indy car, or a tricycle. You want to win at that racetrack. And, um, you know, I feel like, uh, you know, I I'm excited to get out there. Obviously, inaugural events are always extra special. Um, if you could win the, the first uh, Cup race on the road course, that would mean a lot. No, I think it's great for the Speedway. It's great for NASCAR. It's great for IndyCar. Uh, it's great for the fans, most importantly, for everybody to be there at one time and be able to enjoy it together. So uh, I'm excited about it. I think it's a great, uh, great opportunity for both sports to help lift each other. And another race weekend kicks off in Speedway tomorrow with practice and qualifying for the Harvest GP. Tickets are also still available for Friday and Saturday's IndyCar races on the road course. Tickets Thursday are $15 and they go to $25 and $35 for race days. Up to 10,000 fans will be allowed in each day. All tickets this year are digital with mobile or print at home options available. A program reminder, the NBA Finals kick off tonight right here on a WRTV. The Los Angeles Lakers take on the Miami Heat in Game 1. Coverage starts at 8.30. That will be followed by WRTV News at 11. Still ahead here, driving your way to some extra holiday cash. UPS is hiring more than 1,000 jobs in Indianapolis. How much you could make coming up? Decades apart in age with every very different life experiences. And even though they are both gone, their legacy is helping to feed the city's poor. How you can help. Temperatures in central Indiana in relative terms were mild today. We'll talk about a cooler pattern right through the weekend coming up.
Hiring Hoosiers is our commitment to keep you informed of all kinds of job opportunities. Let's start with UPS. The company announced today that it expects to hire more than 1,500 seasonal workers in the Indianapolis area to help with the expected increase of holiday package volume. Tractor trailer and package car driver jobs start at $21 to $35 an hour. Pay for package handlers starts at $14.50 to $19.50 an hour and $16.80 an hour for driver helpers. There are four UPS locations in Indianapolis. If you're interested in applying, look for information at HiringHoosiers.com. Dave & Buster's is now hiring for its second Indiana location at the Greenwood Park Mall. They're looking to hire more than 125 people to work as managers, servers, bartenders, hosts, line cooks, game techs, and more. The Greenwood location is expected to open Monday, November 2nd. If you're interested in applying, you'll also find this at HiringHoosiers.com. The Rebound Indiana is our initiative to highlight organizations that are working to meet the needs of Hoosiers during this pandemic. On the west side, we found a food pantry and two individuals who together dreamed big. As WRTV's Lauren Casey reports, even years after their deaths, the Lord's Pantry at Anna's house is working to achieve the dream of caring for our poor. Nice guy in the world, really. I'm not gonna go Just doing the Lord's work. And, and he said, I have to feed these people. They need somebody to speak for them. Those people were those in need in Indianapolis. Lucius Newsom stood out in his signature bib overalls and he stood tall in his beliefs as the beggar for the poor worked tirelessly to feed the people. He's teaching, not only feeding, he's teaching the younger generation that you give, just give. That was the case in 2006, as Lucius opened the Lord's Pantry at Anna's house on the corner of Elder in New York, dedicated to his friend, Anna Malloy. If a little girl in a wheelchair with a trach on mechanical ventilation could be here serving, none of us had an excuse not to serve somewhere. Julie Malloy continues working at the pantry today. Anna was my daughter. And even though her daughter and Lucius died in 2008, their mission to serve is living on in this special place. But we're a pretty small place trying to make a big impact. And the need is growing with COVID-19. So our families drive up. We load their car with as much as we possibly can. You know, I'd like to say that the need of the community is diminishing, but it's not. And we're seeing more and more families every week that are coming from outside of the area. Julie says serving at the pantry gave her purpose in her daughter's passing. Volunteers serve more than 200 families each week, focusing on fresh produce, meats and breads. Though the pandemic has changed the way they serve families on the west side, she is inspired by the families in need who also volunteer to help their neighbors. Good stewards like Anna and Lucius. Together they were serving a community and the two of them just built this crazy little friendship. Together, they dreamed big dreams, and they didn't let physical differences get in the way of what their hearts hoped to do here. He was just like this, <laughs> he was this huge black man that just had a love for everyone. And Anna was a little teeny tiny thing. It was like polar opposites of people. You know, you had big and little, you had black and white, you had young and old. But they didn't see any of that in one another. They just saw, here's my friend. Here's somebody I can work alongside and make a difference. In this time of great uncertainty, with a global pandemic and racial unrest, maybe we could all look to Lucius and Anna for a little clarity. I think if we stop looking at ourselves and looked outwardly, we'd truly see who people were. And if we put our differences aside, together we can change lives. They didn't define people as anything but God's creatures. So how can you help continue the mission? Well, Lauren tells us they do need volunteers and just recently reopened their online portal after closing it down temporarily due to COVID-19. There is always a financial need to purchase food as well. So for ways to give and volunteer, click on this story on our website at wrtv.com slash rebound. Sunshine out today, but it was a breezy afternoon out there. Time to check in with 